Hey everybody, DJ here, and we're going to be looking at the ProRender 2.5.2 Beta 2.0 Renderer. Now I know that sounds really confusing. Basically what we're looking at is a development build, the current development build that's available as of today's date. And we're going to be looking at the 2.0 Renderer, which is a brand new rendering system. And before we begin, if you'd like to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so that we can get that out of the way. So let's jump into Blender, and uh, I have the 2.9 right now, which is available on the Blender website, but this should work with 2.83 as well. And uh, basically, it's the same thing as you did before uh, with installing your ProRender uh, engine, but what you'll need to do before you install the new version, if you decide to get it from the dev site, which I will provide a link to right here uh, in the uh, description, so just check the description below. But if you go in here, you need to remove this add-on first. At least that's what they uh, suggest that you do so that the uh, install is fresh. So you'll need to remove this, uh, you know, save your preferences. So save your preferences there. Open it up, and you should not see this anymore when you search for add-ons. And when you download the new zip file, you should be able to install it exactly the same as you did before. Or if you haven't done it before, you should be able to install it as any other third-party extension outside of the Blender internal. So once you have that installed, you just need to go over here, go to the Render Engine, and select Ready on ProRender. And for those of you who have been using it for a while, you'll notice a couple changes. So um, I'm going to try to point out a few of the things right off the bat. To switch over to 2.0, you need to go to RPR up here, change this to 2.0 Beta. And you'll notice that this also has the render modes here. But we're not really going to go into that. We're just going to be going into the global illumination for the most part. And if we go over here to render devices, you'll see that you have the CPU available and the GPUs. I have two Radeon 7s. And you should see your uh, GPUs that are supported right here. Underneath here where it says sampling, you'll see 64 samples, max 128. That's just your basic samples so that when you use um, any sort of noise threshold, which if I turn on 1.0, which is the full setting here, you'll see that there's a noise threshold right here. And it doesn't look like this is really being implemented in the 2.0 as of yet. It's probably something that they're going to be implementing soon. Um, but for right now, we're really not going to worry about that too much. So I'm going to go back to the 2.0, but that's why that's basically grayed out, is it doesn't seem like that's working right now. You do have tiled rendering, which works just fine. I used it previously to check it out. And if we go down here, this is where all of the new stuff really is. And in order for me to kind of like talk about this, I'm actually going to jump out of the default cube one here. And I'm going to open up a session that I already have. So I'm not going to save this. And I'm going to open up my file here. And there's a few things that you'll notice that uh, right off the bat from this view. No, this is not something wrong with your computer or the compression rate on YouTube, this is actually a new feature that's inside of 2.0. And this took me a while to really understand. And I think it's important for you to get this. So you can see that I can move in my viewer over here in the, uh, in the previewer. If I move in and out, you can see that it's rendering. And you can see up here it says time, and then it has the iteration count. So 32 samples. Now if I go down here, and if you look right here where it says adapt viewport resolution, this is a new feature. And I'm just going to try and pull this over here. This is a new feature that they just put into this new render where you can basically uh, turn down the resolution of your preview to speed up the way it's rendering. So if you go to a, uh, not the samples here, but if you go to the minimum resolution scale and you change this to a 50, and if we basically refresh this, you can see that that's becoming more clear. And if we set this to a 75, you can see that it's becoming even clearer. And up here, you can see the time is increasing, and it goes up to the iter iteration count of 32. Now, 32 is what they suggest uh, on the boards, on the development boards, to keep your computer from basically going crazy and rendering too many samples and all that. You can try um, increasing that, but for this video, I'm not going to. And I have seen that it sometimes locks it in to where it starts to sort of um, take too long in rendering the samples here, but really that's not too 
much of an issue. They do have this little checkbox here that says OpenGL interoperability. And it says here, you know, use OpenGL interoperability in viewport. This should speed up viewport, viewport rendering. However, to use an external GPU for viewport rendering, this should be disabled. So if you have an eGPU, maybe turn that off. Um, I have seen that there is a change, kind of. So if I turn this off, so it says 8.3 seconds. And if I turn this off and sort of reset this. So last time it was 8.3, and we can see now that it is 8.3. So I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to do unless this has to do with NVIDIA cards, which I don't have. Um, so if that's the case, awesome that they have this av available. Um, I just don't see an, uh, a change in that for me. So the other thing here that you really need to pay attention to is that the way that this is rendering, and this is just a disclaimer on anything that uh, you're testing and looking at beta and development builds for, not everything is being implemented 100% yet. There are some issues like the um, the background uh, HDRI. I'm just gonna turn this on to the wireframe here. The um, environment background, when you set the film to transparent background, it doesn't yet work and volumetrics don't work. So that's a very important thing to understand. Um, you probably have seen my video recently on glass rendering within uh, Radeon Pro Render where I talked about how the volume glass is really amazing and you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with it. Um, volumes don't work right now, whether it's inside of a glass or an object or if you create, um, if you go here to the world and you turn on this button here that says create fog object, volumes just don't work yet. Um, they're aware that it's an issue, they're working on it, but you know, just keep that in mind that that doesn't work. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that um, when I rendered with uh, the 1.0 render, so if I change this to 1.0 here to full, that's the 1.0 render, I did notice that there, um, that when using two Radeon 7s or two Radeon 7s and an OpenCL uh, or a CPU, Altogether, there were a lot of artifacts and a lot of weird stuff that was happening. You couldn't really scale up your renders. Now, um, the 2.0, the 2.0 here, is basically solving that. And I've noticed that although the 2.0 render as it is right now is slightly slower uh, than the 1.0 renderer, it does scale up the GPU and CPU renders quite well. So you do see a very clear difference between your uh, one GPU, two GPUs, and then adding your multiple GPUs and your CPU. So they do have that going for it, which is really great. Um, and I think that's a, a really cool thing about it. Um, the other thing that I think is really important that I, want, I wanted to show you guys is that they have uh, and I'll kind of show it to you, and maybe you'll notice it right away if I zoom in on a section down here. So if we zoom in and we look at this section right down here, you might notice something happening, and that is soft shadows. So you may have heard me complain or gripe or whatever you want to call it that the point light system inside of uh, this engine did not allow for soft shadows. And a lot of people ask me in a lot of my comparison videos, why are the shadows so sharp? What's going on with that? And it's because the soft light shadows were not really being implemented inside of ProRender using point lights and some of the primitives. And you'll see here that they actually do have what's called shadow soft size. And in 2.0, this does affect this. So if I turn off my uh, different lights here, and if I set this one, let me just turn this off real quick so that it doesn't lag too much. So if I take this and I set this to a 0.2 or something like that, so much smaller, and change this to rendered, you can see that that shadow is quite harsh. And you can even see it from this far away. You can see how, how sharp that shadow is and it sort of falls off back here. Now, if I change this 
to a, let's do a one. Notice the highlight here and the shadows here, okay? So you can see that it very, very clearly is applying that soft shadow effect. Now I checked with IES lights and that still doesn't seem to be implemented and that might be something they're working on, I'm not sure, um, but that is something uh, that is different. One thing I wanna talk about really quick is Node Wrangler using the new Radeon Pro Render. I do not know if this is something that I screwed up or whatever, or maybe it just all of a sudden started working, but it appears that Node Wrangler is working just fine. So you may have heard in a previous video that I said it doesn't work. It does now, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why it wasn't before. Uh, again, it might be just me or something else. So once you switch over to Radeon Pro Render, if it looks like the Node Wrangler isn't working, um, go up to Edit Preferences and just make sure that Node Wrangler is checked on and uh, you should be able to use it just fine. One thing I want to talk about briefly is that when using this render engine, and sometimes when you're rendering even with cycles or something like that, you might run into some odd issues that you really can't explain. Uh, you might set up a compositing node structure and an image turns out, instead of being rendered out correctly, it might end up something like this, where it's completely black and you don't really know what happened. Now I'm using this as just an example. Uh, I use this denoiser to do a general denoise with uh, ProRender. But if we look through this again, I'll kind of try to explain to you what's going on here and why that might be happening. So if we go and we look at our render, and if you look around your image, you might see these weird white, like super, super white speckles. And depending on how you've done your file and depending just kind of in general on um, your render and the situation, you might find stuff like this. So like here's one here. Um, here's one right here. So those are errors. Those are artifacts in your rendering. And they can actually create a pretty big problem for you because your compositing nodes may not work. And sometimes when you try to save out an image like a PNG, the coloring won't look like this. It will look completely different. And that has to do with basically the fact that you have some non-values here or NAN values, or um, basically they're way beyond anything that a computer is properly able to calculate. And generally what you would do is you'd have to find a way to get these values to be somewhere manageable so that they're not crazy like that. And I don't know why I thought of this because um, this sort of thing has been bothering me for a while, not even just in ProRender, but in certain renders in uh, Cycles or sometimes even in uh, EV or something like that, where I'll have, for some reason, all of a sudden there'll be an area that's uh, a non-value or it's artifacting or something like that. So this will actually help to cure that issue. And it's called the Z-Combine. I remembered this, I don't know, in like the dark recesses of my brain. And you got to remember, I'm not by trade a compositor. I'm more of a 3D generalist. And this Z-Combine, when you plug in your image here and you plug in your Z and you uh, plug in another image down here, what it will actually do is it will help to get rid of those weird non-values. And if I look at this again, so you can still see, uh, if I change, oh, I'm in rendering, hold on really quick. So you can see here, if I look around in those same areas, I'm not seeing those big white ones. I'm seeing like, here's a little black one here. And... I'm not really seeing those really big, bright um, pixels anymore. And what the Z Combine does, uh, let's go back to compositing here, as long as you put in this anti-alias Z, it says right here, anti-alias the Z buffer to try to avoid artifacts most useful for Blender renders. So basically, if you see any weird issues like that, if you're trying to run it through either a glare node or this denoise or something like that, and you see some weird stuff, um, try a Z Combine and then you can try throwing that into your denoiser. And if we view through here, and it looks like the comp just happened, we can see that the compositor now worked and it's not just a big black frame. So I wanted to show you this because this will allow you to do some renders with it and test things out without being frustrated. I literally spent the entire day trying to figure out how to get this 
to where it looks really nice and present and presentable to you guys so that you can kind of see what the uh, what a possible render could look like using this new engine. Um, this is using materials from their materials library as well, so you get some really nice effects. So take a look at it, uh, visit the website, uh, the GitHub link that I sent you guys, and uh, try to get on their development list if you can, so you can keep trying it out and give them feedback as you can on what's working, what's not working, and all that kind of stuff, because the more we can help them out, the better we can get this engine. So thanks a lot, and I hope you were able to learn something, and I hope that you play around with this engine just like me, and share your tips and feedback. And I'll see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.